This video from Ethan Klein just came out. Like I said, my Discord suggested it. It's called Hassan Piker. He's a Weasley little liar. You guys know Hassan Piker has an infamous line where he says, What a Weasley little liar, dude. So Ethan has gone ahead and uh, named his his uh, video that of uh, that, and this is on Ethan's personal channel. So that's why the setup is a little different. If you guys aren't aware, Ethan has a separate channel where he kind of posts his rants, and we're about to about to watch one. Hello, I'm here to address something that happened on Thursday's show. We were doing our post election cope stream, and um the subject of Israel had came up and here is what was said oh, about it. Oh, we didn't you we didn't watch that cuz like again I'm I'm moving away from Ethan and Ela. I unfollowed Ela from Instagram. I'm so sorry. I just can't. I'm trying to refresh myself 2025. Remember everyone deserves dignity. Everyone deserves love. Anti-Semitism is a problem. It shouldn't exist in the world. And yet we have to deal with it because humans exist. Humans are going to human. But I did have to unfollow them. I'm trying to bond with people who are interested in deconstruction. And right now, Ethan and Ela's decision to not deconstruct is like a little bit too much for me as a consumer. But as a job and as a person who reviews content for a living, I'm here to review the content, girl. Violet with the super chat, let's go, says the boys are fighting and could care less. Would rather look at Mama Simon flex her guns for the rest of the stream. Let's go, bros. Let's go. Oh, look at those. Oh, look at those details, bro. Look at those details. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that so much. <laughs> okay, it was very serious. Let's be very serious. Okay. Let's take a look. Trump is so pro-Israel, it's insane. Uh, not only is he pro-Israel, I mean, he and hates Bibi, Arabs. Him yeah, and Bibi, sure. like, talk a lot, and Bibi's be become a lot like Trump. So. Yeah, Bibi's his guy. Uh, Bibi is Netanyahu, from my understanding, right? All right, they're like homies. Bibi's celebrating last night. Just the other day, Bibi fired a really good guy that a lot of people are pissed about mm -hmm. and he fired him because they d had a disagreement and that's like so trump code well, he was like a moderating voice in the war room yeah and he got rid of him or at least a more moderate voice i don't know anything about the guy here we're talking about uh yoav galat who was a member of netanyahu's war cabinet who just yesterday was fired by netanyahu because he wanted to end the war and that you know, who wants to continue the war, and therefore he fired him. Once he was fired, people in Israel took to the streets and are protesting because as far right as Netanyahu's you know, war cabinet is, he is literally a moderating voice in that cabinet and was the only one representing the people and pushing for the war to end. The problem with uh, Yoav which I don't even think Ela probably knew at the time because this war has been going on for so long, is that he's somewhat infamous for this quote here. He said on October 8th, um, there will be no electricity, no food, no fuel. We are fighting human animals and we act accordingly. When he ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes, well, I... <laughs> I think I've heard that quote before. Now I know who we talking about. That's that's a crazy quote. Okay. He's talking about um, entering Gaza in the first phases of the war. Now, a lot of people look at this um, language and think that it's dehumanizing and genocidal. And I'm one of those people. I agree that this, this is a horrible thing to say and I don't defend him and I never would defend him a, a statement like this, which I assume people who watch this show know and understand. Now, a year plus later, for whatever reason, this is... To be fair, hold the chat saying the same guy Ethan is calling a moderate. Okay, just for the record, this this might be a really progressive stance, but this is what... The, he That kind of is what centrists sound like to me, but that is what moderates sound like to me. Because moderates are always moderate right. Centrists are always centrist right. They're sometimes centrist left, like Ethan Neal or centrist left. But I also... F I always feel when people call themselves a moderate, they're actually just like light conservatives. So I'm not actually that surprised, but liberals also are known, if you recall 9-11 and going into Iraq, they're also known for their desire to take up arms when necessary. I mean, Biden, the Biden, Biden administration is currently backing Israel right now. So, you know, let's just keep that in mind. But I'm not, I hate to say it that way because I don't know what the, the, I don't know when Ethan says moderate, what he exactly means. But when I hear that word, you know what I mean? They're the moderates who are like, I voted for Trump because of the economy, which is, you know, I get it. We want to feed our kids. We want to make sure that they have the resources they need. That's fair. But also, 
Did you need to vote for? Okay, you do. This is the same guy who's advocating for the war to end in Israel. And Ela, looking over uh, the news, sees that people are rioting, that people are upset, and that people who want the war to end are- Even this morning in Amsterdam, pro uh, or Israeli, pro-Palestine people were rioting, or like fighting each other because of a football match. Like, listen, I don't like these crowds of people as much as anyone else. This is re the reason I don't join like these mod, like these, like these, these like events. There's a reason I'm not in big crowds of people. There's a reason I don't want to hang out with you guys because ultimately like the violence just, you know, becomes too much because you're, you're falling into a very big biological trap of forgetting that when you're together in a group, you feel more um, vindicated in your violence. And I don't want anyone to feel vindicated in their violence. Right. And so that's why I don't hang out in these big group activities, especially in sports communities where y'all are violent over literally sports, let alone adding in a layer of politics. Like, no, thank you. Again, anti-Semitism is real. Islamophobia is real. Anti-Arab sentiment is real. Like these things are real. Racism is real. Misogyny is real. Misandry is real. All of it is real. It's a real phenomenon amongst humans as a species. OK, are upset that he got fired. And that's basically all that happened. We're talking about the fact that he's the only person that wants to end the war. And I personally don't understand how that's not relevant. Hear from The Guardian, a left-leaning newspaper. I mean, to be fair, I think Trump also wants to end wars. Isn't Trump always saying he's the anti-war president? So if that's all you need him to be, like, Ethan could vote for Trump. Like, that's the problem is, like, again, we're using this as an observation to, like, learn more about ourselves. But realistically... Just being like a person who wants to end the war and depending on the reason, you know, Trump's not wanting to end the war for anything other than he doesn't think it's good for money. Right. He doesn't think the money is worth it. Right. So, again, it's that it's not like ending the war is enough. It's also why and how have you contributed to the war expanding? Right. But OK, I can see his perspective because, again, in a limited perspective, there is like that sounds like good news. Like, oh, they want to end the war. OK. OK. Sure. You guys all probably know. Here's a headline. Benjamin Netanyahu fires defense minister Yoav Gallant, triggering protests in Israel. Demonstration in Tel Aviv, widely seen by Israel's allies as a break on far right elements of the Israeli government. Again, this isn't just my opinion. This is opinion that's held by uh, international uh, internationally, that he is a moderating voice on the war cabinet. Once again, advocating for the war to end, which is what it's like. It's like <laughs> it kind of sounds like sometimes I, maybe I, this is hi hyperbole. But it kind of sounds like you're in Germany during Hitler's reign and you're like, hey, Hitler, instead of like um, citing the Jews, what if we uh, just killed half of them? <laughs> it's like, well, you already decimated Gaza. You already implemented a genocide. Acting like, why are you pulling out now? Like, why are you doing it? And also there's a video footage that just came out and Israel is claiming they'll hold people accountable. I don't want to show it on stream, but it's available on TikTok of Israeli soldiers just pushing dead Palestinian bodies off of buildings, you know, just like playing with them, like they're toys. And so again, like when we're having conversations about these things, we have to understand what is happening. Why are people saying what they're saying? And also, how is this relevant? Now, the reason I'm watching this is because one of my Discord members shared it and said that there is damning information about Hassan about halfway through. And that's what I'm looking for, because look, I'm very critical of people in this space. I'm critical of bubbles. You know that I am. And you know, I'm always trying to see this from a philosophical lens. But ultimately, Hassan has been incredibly consistent. I have heard no bad things about him from personal um, stories or anecdotes or friends. He's not infamous for really knowing these things. Again, only if you know Hassan. If you're in different bubbles that hate Hassan and you only learn about him that way, which even I fell for for a short time, right? Where I was like, oh, Hassan's like a bad person. And then I was like researching Hassan. I was like, oh, he's just like a regular person. He's not any more bad than anyone else, but he actually has one of the cleanest reputations socially amongst youtubers and that's what i actually think is interesting about hassan which is also why i credit him for being very strategic because he is in politics but he actually has an incredibly clean record unlike a lot of these you know centrist liberals a lot of these people that are debate bros a lot of these politicians that just got elected for president who have horrible records and how they treat women how they've impacted people like how they've actually like trump i mean trump alone right like he <laughs> Do we need to say more? So again, I understand people's disdain for Hassan, but are you actually coming from a perspective that you've researched it yourself? Or are you listening to other YouTubers who already hate him? By the way, other YouTubers who are incredibly misogynistic and treat people in their life abusively and badly. 
and other things that will remain quiet for now. But like there are things that you do not understand that they hate Hassan for very particular reasons. Trust me. Now, Hassan might have skeletons in his closet like they do, right? But I haven't seen them dug up yet. Okay, so I'm waiting to see if that's true. So let's let's see what Ethan has to say about Hassan being anti-American later on, which, by the way, is going to cause a huge conversation on this channel, because what does it even mean to be anti-American? Let's see. Let's see what Ethan's going to say, because remember, this video is titled Hassan Piker is a Weasley Little Liar. So this video is about Hassan and we're three minutes in and there better be a correlation. What I thought we all wanted. Here's another article from The Guardian. Yoav Gallant reportedly says Israeli army has nothing left to do in Gaza. The ousted defense minister also quoted as saying Netanyahu rejected peace deals against advice of his security officials. As you can see, I'm not saying any of this to defend him. What he said and what he's done uh, should very well be investigated by the uh, International Criminal Corps. And if he's found, he should submit to an investigation. If he's found guilty, then charge him. But what I am saying is that I think that while Elon misspoke and said he's a good guy, her okay. intention okay. was that, you know, this guy is trying to. Chat says, I don't find it important, their personal life, then you are part of the problem. Because if you don't think it's important how Trump treats women in his personal life, you don't think it's important that he was, he was found guilty in a civil court for assaulting a woman. If you don't think it's important that any of these streamers might have other reputations similar, if you don't think it's important, then you are part of the problem. It is important what people do in their personal life. It is important how they treat their children, how they treat their loved ones, how they treat the women in their life and the men in their lives. It is important. And if you don't think it's important that a majority of Americans voted for or allegedly a civil oh, an assaulter, I don't know if I can legally call him a racist, but he was found in civil court to be guilty. But if you don't think that matters, then you are part of the problem. And I hope you have a moment to deconstruct that later. I feel like the reason I brought it up was mainly to express the frustration with Bibi and him firing the one guy that was somewhat, you know, attempting at moderation. It wasn't really so much to say Gallant is a good guy. I shouldn't have used that word. That was a bad choice on my part considering stuff that he has said that I was not even thinking of. Really coming from the concerning feeling of like, we have Trump in office and Bibi just fired the guy that is opposing him. That's all I was trying to say, but I, I do understand that was not a good choice of words and I would not have said that again. So I'm stepping away for a little while from being on camera and being on the podcast. Mm. It's, okay. um, it's too much and it's not fair for everybody. And yeah. So that, that's where our head was at when we said that. But now people like Hassan are going on their channels and accusing us of uh, supporting a war criminal. Anyway, here's what Hassan said this evening about the clip that sent everybody into a frenzy. Crazy. I just hate how Ethan is getting smaller content creators like the deprogram because he couldn't get to you. Girl, so we keep speaking smaller content creators that are just getting by and he is sitting on his golden throne just straight up harassment. I know he, he's just I can't get over the fact that they keep and crying about me responding to these communities like this is the biggest socialist podcast they have like they they have hundreds of thousands of subscribers second channel second dot has two million subscribers when can i when can i respond to these people when when is it warranted like give me a break what is what is that in reference to really like i'm a little confused on what that is like completely in reference to you know it's how they have the conversations the fact i don't think ethan is watching hassan's streams like enough to get the context so i'm not really sure what that is an exact reference to i can assume but i kind of want to know like aligning with all these fucking drama peddlers like keemstar and in an effort to try and get me banned is psychotic to me you know i just don't get it i don't understand it what a liar dude what a weasley little liar he's just straight up lying he's just lying right now in fact this is a lie that he keeps saying is that i'm somehow aligning myself with keemstar once again i'll show you i went and fished out the original stories i was talking about frogan getting shit from a ton of conservatives for her wonderful remarks about ethan is the stupidest person i have ever seen on the internet and i mean this with the most peace and love let me explain it to him like he's a fifth grader when you go to school and you take a stance in which everyone backing you are the bullies on the playground, you are aligning yourself with the bullies, okay? So if you are endorsed by the KKK, if you are voting for the same candidate that the KKK would vote for, we have to have conversations about what that means, okay? So when you align yourself with a position in which everyone who's backing you is a part of a very bad group of people, you have to think about your stance. If the communities who are coming out to root for you 
are the communities who are these people, are the Keem stars, are the destinies, are all these people, are people who literally have horrible, horrible reputations of how they treat the women in their lives, the people in their lives, you know, amongst other things. Like if those are the people who are defending your stance, you need to re-examine your stance. And you need to say, how am I communicating in a way that's alienating the base I want while encouraging the base I don't want to back me? This is what Ethan has to ask himself. And this is what Ethan is so frustrating about. He is not pro-Palestine. Because all of his stances while being pro-Palestine are pro-Israel. You have to make a decision. I am not pro-Israel, pro-Palestine. I am pro-Palestine. Palestine has a right to exist. It does exist. The way people have treated Palestinian people is wrong. Israel has a right to exist in the sense that any country has the right to exist, which I'm not sure what that means. Israel already exists. It's literally a big player in the political schema of things. Okay, Palestine is the underdog. So it's not a matter of Israel existing or not. It does exist. Palestine does exist. You might disagree because of the way things had gone the last 75 years, but Palestinian people exist. They're there. Okay. So when we're having conversations about this, you have to make it clear, right? That your stance has to either be reworded or redone or rebranded to make it clear who you want backing you. But right now, Ethan has the worst people on the internet backing him against Hassan, who, whether you think he's the worst person or not, right? You have to make a decision about that. Okay, that is not Ethan's stance. My stance is not Ethan's stance. Okay, and I agree with Chad that no no country is actually entitled to existing. Right, like things will change. America might not exist one day. It only exists now because it's the construct and it's what we've built. Right, Ethan's stance is is not pro Palestine. Okay, he is happy to see Palestine go away realistically as long as Israel gets to say he will pick Israel over Palestine any day. Okay. And that's the difference. Ethan doesn't want to see Israel go away. And I'm saying it's not a matter of going away or not going away. It's a matter of realizing that Israel wants Palestine to go away. And these things are different. These things are totally different. Okay. So I think you need to like really assess where he's coming from. If he has a different argument, he better start making it in a clear and concise way because he's not doing that. Okay. Ethan isn't advocating for himself in a way that is clear And he's making it sound like he's playing both sides in a weird way. Being pro-Palestine is not making excuses for Israel in any way. In any way. So when Ethan says, oh my gosh, my stance is that I'm pro-Israel, which means I don't want 8 million Israelis to go away. But that's what Israel wants for Palestinians. Okay? And that's what you guys aren't understanding. The Israel's stance, okay, is that we stay, you go. That is Israel's stance. So every time Ethan says, I don't want 8 million Israel Israelis to have to leave, nobody has that stance. Okay, that is Israel's way of marketing themselves as, look, they want to kick us out. <laughs> okay, again, when we're having these conversations, Ethan is forgetting the nuance of the language. The nuance of the language is insinuating that what's happening to Israelis, which isn't happening, by the way, isn't happening to the Palestinians. What every fear is, Israel has that might happen to them is literally happening to Palestinians. So Israelis just have the fear of it. Palestinians are living it. They're living it. So every time Ethan says, I'm afraid for Israelis, I'm afraid they're going to have to leave their homes. You're just afraid of it. It's actually happening to Palestinians. And that's the difference. Okay. And that's the difference with a lot of minority cases. I mean, look at the election that just happened. So many people are afraid of something that might happen. Well, the people who are actually experiencing it, the people that are having it happen to them, they are told you're exaggerating. They are told you're being dramatic. You're playing victim. You're, it's not even happening to you yet. It's actually happening to people. You're just afraid of it. You're just literally afraid. Okay. Which is valid. Your fear is valid. But in a philosophical sense, fear is the root of all evil. And you are allowing your fear to get ahead of the fact that it's already happening to Palestinians who are afraid of the possibility their life is in, is, is in real time happening, okay? So you need to like examine that. Also to my mods, time people out if they're being outrageous. If you block people, it's hard to unblock people on YouTube. So like if you block them, they're gone forever. So be cautious with that. I want people to feel they can disagree with me. That's not the issue, right? Especially my members, especially people in my community, But remember that you're coming from a perspective that's only based on what you know. So am I, so are all of us. I just think some people know a little bit more than others or able to deconstruct a little bit better than others, right? 
like here chat says i agree with you generally but i think your values should sway your stance and not the other people but not what other people believe but i get what you're saying rethink your stance if it aligns with the group you dislike exactly like it's really cool if you're the kind of president that everybody could get behind that's kind of a cool feeling but if the only people who get behind you are and misogynists and liars and pyramid scammers, then maybe rethink your stances. And that's the point. If you look at the people who showed up at Trump's rally alone, just look at the people backing him, the people he chose to represent him on stage. That should tell you so much about his campaign. That's the point is look at the people that are praising you and look at the people that are questioning you and then recontextualize if this is what you want. I think Ethan has good intentions, but the road to hell is paved in those good intentions. OK, like right now, what is he yelling over Hassan for? Because he doesn't understand the stance. He doesn't get it. A lot of these men who are not deconstructing, they're not going to therapy. They're not recontextualizing their beliefs. And a lot of the women in these bubbles, every gender, really, all of them, all the genders, the Z's, the Z's, all of them. OK. They're forgetting to deconstruct. Notice how none of them are going to therapy. None of them are talking about their traumas. None of them are saying, hey, I talked to a therapist. I really needed this. Like they're not doing the work. So of course they're just going to hear their echo chamber. And even when his own team, I just posted the video today, even when Dan pushes back, Ethan snaps at him. Ethan snaps at him. Snaps. Inappropriate. Inappropriate. Okay. Inappropriate. Let's keep going. About hoping American uh, military men get PTSD. I was showing it to say it's not my fault that she's getting harassed when this clip of her is going mega viral on Twitter and being called out by the worst people on the internet, right? Look at, these are all conservative shitbags. These are all people that I disagree with and have openly said terrible things about, including Keemstar. So like the way that he singles him out and says, oh, Ethan is co-signing Keemstar, is he's a fucking liar, dude. He's a weaselly little liar. The person that they're talking about is Yoav Gal- That's interesting, like when he says it that way, right? Huh? Isn't that interesting? Like, just think about that. Like, think how this is the this is what Ethan takes away from the situation. Gallant. Yoav Gallant, alongside Benjamin Netanyahu, has an active petition for his arrest by the ICC. The person that they are talking about here. Oh. Did my stream go away? It's the Internet. It cut out because when I flexed earlier, it was like these guns are illegal on stream, bro. No guns on stream without a license. That's what happened. We're back. So let's get back into it. OK, so Ethan was ranting about Hassan, calling him a wheezy little liar. Classic Ethan, classic Hassan. Let's keep going from this point. Before getting fired. By Benjamin Netanyahu, the person that they're calling a moderating voice said this which is the reason why there is an active petition, an active act. I feel like Ethan is getting upset that people are taking him out of context as if this isn't the internet. Just like the video I posted this morning where Ethan was getting upset that the internet was calling him a Zionist Nazi. Like, I'm sorry, have you ever been to the internet? This is why as a content creator, it is hard. I understand. I am saying from a personal lived experience, it is very difficult. That's why I block everybody. Like, I'll be real. I block people in my chat that I think are just being bullies and not being actually critical. You guys know I'm happy to change my mind. You guys know I'm happy to keep critical voices in the audience. But you have to come at good faith, you know, and I'm trying really hard to be good faith with Ethan because I do think I understand what's happening better than him. Just because he's too in the bubble to see it. I'm trying to ask him to zoom out. Not that he has to. And not that I'm perfect. I could be wrong on things, but because I also know what kind of bullshit happens behind closed doors. Remember, I am a content creator and I have connections to some of these people. And remember, I've heard what they've said behind closed doors when nobody is listening. So I know there's bullshit happening, whether people believe it or not. OK, so I am trying to be very open minded to the miscommunication that is happening. I think genuinely a lot of this is a miscommunication that is occurring. And so how do we communicate properly by knowing and categorizing things correctly? And I don't think Ethan knows enough to categorize correctly. Again, Hassan has been so consistent with his views for so many years on the Internet. So the fact that Ethan did a political show with him and then was so surprised by by Hassan's recent stances tells me like you're not doing the research. You're not paying it, which I've done, too. You know how many YouTubers I've collabed with? And I was like, oh, I did not research you enough. Or, oh, like, I've, I did not, like, do my due diligence here. And that's not their fault. It's mine. It's not Hassan's fault for being Hassan. It's Ethan's for not doing the research and then backing him and promoting him without doing the research. You know, even recently, who is that scummy guy that Ethan had to kick out of his 
his community. And right away, when Ethan started bringing him around, Jimmy, Jimmy, I was like, this guy's scummy. This guy's an asshole. Like, this guy's a misogynist. Like, I don't know why Ethan keeps giving him a benefit of the doubt. And then he had to ban him for assaulting a woman, allegedly. And like, I'm sitting here like, how did Ethan not see this coming? Like, Ethan has no better judge of character than any of us. Like, we all suffer from a bad judge of character because we want to give people the chances. We want to believe people are good. We want to extend the olive branch. So I'm not saying Ethan has to be perfect. I'm saying when we're having conversations like this, we have all been here enough. It's just Ethan is the only one not showing enough compassion at the moment. And he wants everyone to show him compassion. And it's like, we want to show you compassion, but you're not showing it enough to anyone else that the emotional labor feels one way right now. And that's the dilemma. The emotional labor is one way right now. And Ethan is not giving anyone else that space to feel any, any type of way. And I think that's unfair. But yeah, he can't be surprised after he wanted to deplatform Hassan, wanted to have all of these things taken away from Hassan and all these people that Hassan might see a clip of him saying good things about this man in Israel and then run with it because he's a political streamer. Listen, look at this. Like Ethan, the way he's gone after Hassan so hard and then Hassan makes one comment about them backing this guy. It's like the end of the world for Ethan. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Everything is the end of the world when it's Ethan. But, you know, everyone else just has to cater to his feelings always, right? Uh, or they're an anti-Semite, right? That's Ethan's narrative. Application for a warrant for his arrest by the ICC. I, I don't know. I'm like, I'm, I'm legitimately shocked. The problem. Shout out to R. Thank you so much for the super chat system. It can't keep you down. Can't keep us down, girls. Okay, let's go. Ethan's going to yell. Why I'm frustrated with this whole situation. You guys know me. I'm more than willing, more than happy to address um, shortcomings and errors that I've made. And He is to an extent, but then he stops. He is to an extent, but then he stops. And we all have limitations. I have limitations. You have limitations. He does to an extent, but he doesn't deeply understand the issues. He doesn't deeply understand the issues deeply like he only understands them superficially, which is what everyone's everyone's frustration is. Right. I take every chance I can to learn and grow from them. Right. But the problem I have is that there's our subreddit and our community is over over ridden with these eight year long time ultra fans who can no longer you know, tolerate us or they can no longer walk down this path with us as we've thrown our lot in with the Nazis, right? But like these same people, okay, have, they, they hold no standards. And Hassan can go out there and glaze an international terrorist organization and its leader and, and, and glaze up Hassan Nasrallah like he's a, a fucking great dude. Hassan Nasrallah was assassinated. Uh, Hezbollah is a, is a paramilitary organization that is also a uh, part of the Lebanese parliament. Do we like them or no? I think as a resistance group, they're pretty successful against Israel. They are a terrorist organization. Like they're de designated. They are they are designated by the American state okay. as a terrorist organization. I do not like them then. Well, like- I like what you like. I don't have an issue with them, let's just say. I'm gonna give you guys a- Okay, just pause there. Okay. What do we think this means? Like, what do we think Hassan is saying, right? What do we think Hassan's narrative is? And I'm not defending it. I'm asking you to explain it. What do you really think he's saying in that moment? What do you think Hassan, and who's biased and in a bubble as much as any of us, Hassan, who's Turkish, Hassan, who has connections to people around the world in this region, Hassan, who is more of a connection, right? What do we think Hassan is saying? What do you think he's expressing, right? What do you think he's hoping to say? Who do you think? And again, if you're getting all of your media from Western media, who, by the way, again, you cannot, you can, you have to, you have to deeply understand, right? You have to deeply understand that to people around the world, America is a terrorist organization, that they see America as this threat to their dignity and sanctity of life, that we are living in a superpower nation. If you're American, and you are so fucking privileged, even when you're the worst of the worst subjugated minorities compared to every other person around the world who at the flick, at the snap of a finger, America can send bombs down to your country and everyone has to mind their own business about it. Right. So remember, like America has its perks, but it also is responsible for deaths around the world in a way that is so painful to other countries. So you have to understand that 
if you're a person who's American, which anyone could be, and you're a part of another, you know, part of the world, you have connections to part of the world, you might want to have those two people meet in a way, but you still have to have them acknowledge how they've ruined your life, which is why when Biden comes out, makes a strong speech, apologizing for what Americans did to native and, you know, natives, that can be very powerful and healing for nations. And how long did that take? How long did that take? And it was just a verbal apology. It doesn't bring back all of the people that were genocided. And so it is a part of healing and we have to move forward as a nation and we have to acknowledge those things. But people will say, well, how much do we have to acknowledge it? We already acknowledged it. You sound like boomer parents that are like, I'm sorry you feel that way. Well, Israeli soldiers are like knocking Palestinian bodies off roofs, uh, like with no care in the world, making jokes about Palestinian homes being blown up. Well, there's little mermaid blankets in the background indicating a little girl lived here. OK, so again, I'm not saying and I'm trying to take again, we're going to zoom out. I'm not saying America has to be perfect. I'm saying we have to acknowledge that none of us are not any group in the world, not any political militia group, not freedom fighters, not you, not me. None of us are perfect. So when we make a decision to be pro one side versus another, this is a part of our value system, right? But being pro America, being pro Israel is not really any more better than being pro any other Arab nation around the world that has its own reason to want to protect its people. You think it's better because of the way you've swallowed up the media, the way that you've been convinced by the narrative, but the narrative is what you want it to be. How many animes have you guys watched? How many Disney stories have you watched? How many stories have you watched? How many understanding? Because story is so, narrative is so important. You know the complicated nature of the good guy versus bad guy narrative. You know nobody's ever the good guy or the bad guy, but one side is always the, the one who extends the length of the violence. And usually that is the oppressor. And in this circumstance, we are the oppressors. America is considered the oppressive force because it's the one holding everything in the balance. So when you say, okay, I'm pro-Palestine, but also I don't want 8 million Israelis to have to leave their home, you're discounting any of the reality that Palestinians are, are having happen to them, right? And so you're doing this thing where you, you're, again, you just sound like a white liberal who's like, I don't see color. Everybody's the same to me, but we're not. We're not. And if you don't see color, then you don't see people. Okay? You don't see the nuances of their existence. You don't see the things like my partner just had a conversation with me yesterday. And he was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, what? He's like, people hate curly hair. And I was like, yeah. I was like, I just talked about this on stream. People hate our hair. And it's a ra there's a racist undertone to the fact that people want to call me unkempt or they want to call natural hair, you know, undignified and unprofessional. This isn't because it is, it's because of racism. And as much as people want to say, it's not, I don't see color. I just think you look unorganized. <laughs> okay, girl, deconstruct. And this is what Ethan sounds like, okay? He really does sound like a liberal who's like, I don't see color. Okay, okay, let's have that conversation then. Now, is Hassan perfect? No. Do I have disagreements with Hassan? Sure, I have disagreements with all of you, right? That doesn't mean we can't get along. Now, the more I watch Hassan and the longer period I watch of him, the more I understand his perspective and where he's coming from and generally agree a little bit more with him than in general. But I don't think he's progressive enough, in my opinion, socially, especially. I'm much more socially progressive than Hassan is. But I can see the positives to his work and maybe the way he communicates the negatives. Right. But please do not pretend that Destiny, Keemstar, Ethan, are exempt from any of the bullshit they've ever said on stream any more than Hassan for them to have the audacity of trying to take the higher road when they are the most clippable misogynistic racist like streamers on the platform who claim to be liberal please do not even start I don't know if Keemstar identifies as a liberal actually but okay don't even start the way these people could be clipped the way you built a like if Hassan goes you're going too. So you better hope that we don't start this deplatforming in the way that you want, because I, on, on the other hand, I'm weirdly like pro free speech. I'm an American girl. I think these people shouldn't be deplatformed. But that doesn't mean they're not saying bullshit. OK. OK. Chess says Kim Sarr, pretty sure he is pro Trump. I am pretty sure he's pro Trump, too. I'm pretty sure he is, too. You're right. But needless to say, all of this to say, OK. 
that I don't believe any of these people are actually disagree with Hassan. I think they have a personal vendetta against him and really against themselves. They're mad at themselves for not understanding and being angry, right? Again, if you say, I'm going to go lower, then like, if you go low, I'll go low, then like, go away. Okay. Okay, Ray, thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate it. Okay. Ugh. Farah says, I'm just glad Ela acknowledged how she misspoke. Beyond that, though, I wish e Ethan would just move on. I wish that too. It's like Ethan doesn't understand how the internet works. Like he, but he literally like surprises Philip DeFranco on stream yesterday and throws in the word genocide on a political stream during an election and puts Philip DeFranco in the most awkward situation ever. And I'm sitting here like, you are so cruel to the people in your life, sir. And I do not know if he's not reading the room correctly. He snaps at Dan right after. Like, how can you not understand what weird position you just put your alleged friend in? Like, what an... We're running businesses. We're, they're running multi-million dollar businesses. And Phil tries to take, you know, he really tries to be as neutral as possible a lot of the time. And so it's so difficult. Like, it's just so strange that you would do that. Like, that you would do that to somebody you call a friend. Um, Emily, thank you so much for the super chat. I do appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. So I don't know what Ethan is, what's happening, but I agree with Maiden that Ethan is clearly dysregulated. I agree. I think he's dysregulated. I think he's in his feelings. I think he should go to therapy. I think he should deconstruct that. I think a lot of things. Right. Like I, I would I would want that the most. I really want Ethan to be healthy and well adjusted, but he's not going to be just like these debate bros, just like these people like they're not. And so now here we are. But just a, a reminder, as far as I can see, Ethan is the one snapping at employees and creating constant, constant videos where he's looping. And I just don't see Hassan doing that. So, OK, now let's keep watching because apparently like. Again, people were saying, like, there's some damning stuff about Hassan in this video. So let's see. A crash course on Hezbollah. Let's start back from the beginning. Uh, 1983 suicide truck bombing of the U.S. Embassy in Beirut. 45 embassy staff were killed. Yes, yeah, super bad. All suicide bombings, super bad. All murder, super bad. All killings, super bad. Are injured. They bombed the French Marine barracks in Beirut. 300 dead. Attempted murder of the head of the Turkish Jewish community. Suicide bombing of the Argentine Jewish Mutual Association building in Buenos Aires. 85 killed, 300 injured. This is 1994, right? So it's like 40 years ago. I don't have an issue with them, let's just say. Bombing of a restaurant near the U.S. Okay, this is all the 80s. So just like keep in mind, it's literally 40 years ago. I just want, I think that context matters. U.S. Air Force Base in Spain, 18 killed, 83 injured. Bad, Car bombs at the U.S. Embassy in Beirut, 11 killed, 58 injured. Hijacking of Kuwait airline plane. I want him to do this, but for Israel and America. That's what I want. That's all I want. I think that's what everybody wants. Now do this for Israel and America. Go ahead. That's what I want. I want the, that's balance. Because this isn't balanced. This is the bullshit. We're like, we're just moving over it like it's not a big deal look i'm an american i voted i pay tax i want america to be a great great country which means i have to call it out when necessary which is the point okay planes killed four suicide bombing at the israeli embassy in buenos Aires. 29 killed 240 injured i don't have an issue with them let's just say suspected of carrying out suicide bombing missions against israeli vacationers in bulgaria indicted for the assassination of former Lebanese. okay this is 2011 and 2012 now prime minister rafiq al hariri I don't have an issue with them. Hezbollah participated in the Syrian civil war on the side of Assad, violent dictator. They're responsible for the genocide of well over 500,000 Syrians. Here's an article from Amnesty International. Syria, surrender or starve, strategy displacing thousands, amounts to crimes That's against horrible. humanity. Does that sound familiar? I don't have an issue with them. While the Syrian government's stated aim has been to vanquish opposition fighters, its cynical use of surrender or starve tactics has involved a devastating com combination of sieges and bombardments. I don't have an issue with them. These have been part of a systematic as well as widespread attack on civilians that amounts to crimes against humanity. Sounds like what Israel's doing in Gaza. I don't have an issue with them. But Sounds what... Sounds like what Israel is doing in Gaza. Interesting. Hold on. I'm trying to figure out Ethan's like Ethan's perspective on this. Like I'm trying to figure out. It's hard because you can't read people's minds. Says, so would you say Hassan doesn't do the same for considered terrorist groups? I think Hassan calls everybody out. And I've seen Hassan have a pretty balanced take on like what he's trying to do and who he's aiming to liberate, which is the underdog. And I've seen Hassan say anti-Semitism is bad. I've seen him say countless times that like killing people is bad. I've seen him say countless times that terrorist attacks are bad. I've seen him say countless times like violence is bad. 
Now, what America constitutes as a terrorist attack also includes nonviolent, uh, nonviolent acts of rebellion and hope to liberate people. So I think the issue is that America is willing to call uh, like a lot of things terrorism that I would just consider a part of war. And so the dilemma is like, oh, when they do it, it's terrorism. Well, when we do it, we're we're fighting for justice. We're fighting for America. We're fighting for freedom. And this is narrative. This is what narrative is. We tell the story in a way that makes sense to our brains. But I do think humans are flawed. And I think everybody is mostly wrong, by the way. But when I say that, I mean, everybody is only right based off the perception they have. But it's probably wrong if we actually zoomed out of all of our like narratives, we'd all probably be pretty wrong, you know, because violence is like violence is always wrong. But then we sit here and we justify it. We get on stream and we justify it. We call it a necessary evil. Okay. Okay. You know, you have to really think about what you're saying. You have to really think about what you're saying. So we have to be careful when we call people a terrorist. We have to be careful when we use any word, whether it's Nazi or Zionist. But truthfully, I think people also don't want to adhere to the words. Look, how many people are transphobic? Like, ew, I would never date a trans person. Gross. But they're like, but I'm not transphobic. Or ew, like, um, I don't want my kid to be trans because that's horrible. But other people's kids can be trans. Like, that's transphobia. Like, I'm okay with gay people, but like, I don't want to see them kissing. That's homophobia. Okay. Like, I have no problem with black people, but like, sometimes I do think like they bring the suffering on themselves. Like, okay, hello. Like, do you hear yourselves? Like, I'm not a rape apologist, but like, what was she wearing though? It's like, <laughs> and so people don't understand, like, on a spectrum, it is still homophobia, racism, misogyny, and all the other stuff. On a spectrum, you might not be hanging black people from trees, but you're certainly contributing to racism towards them. You might not be, you know, like rounding Jews up and putting them in, in the, you know, the showers, but you certainly are anti-Semitic all the same. Like you have to be careful about the way you're expressing your thoughts. And I know as somebody who fucks up all the time when she's expressing her thoughts, as somebody who's highly sarcastic, I am trying to be better. Not because I'm asking you to be perfect because I would never want to be perfect, girl. Okay. But even I know, and I have realizations of, oh, I see why that sounded that way. But and because we live on the internet and remember who just got elected president, it would seem that America doesn't really care as long as they feel like they won. Sounds familiar. America doesn't care how many people we kill as long as it feels like we won. America doesn't care if our president assaulted someone as long as they feel like they won. America doesn't care if they voted for a homophobe or a transphobe or a racist as long as they won. America doesn't care who we bomb around the world as long as we won. It doesn't care how it gets its goods as long as we get our goods. It doesn't care. But neither does anybody else around the world. We only care in the way that we can. And this is a very humbling experience to really like accept is like we don't care unless it impacts us. That doesn't mean it shouldn't impact us. It doesn't mean it's not important. It doesn't mean people's families aren't suffering. Ethan is being impacted. The dilemma is he's a hurt person who's taking out his pain on other people. He's dysregulated. He is acting out and it is hurting more than it is helping. He's not listening to his community. He's not listening to his staff. He's not listening to his friends. He's listening to I don't know who really. But right now, there's obviously something happening in Ethan that is unique to Ethan's experience than Hassan's. Hassan has been consistent. He's been saying the same things. I'll show you different clips later today of things that him and Philip DeFranco have both been saying and agree on. And I think we can agree that, you know, Philip DeFranco isn't an extremist, right? But even Philip DeFranco can see similar issues. Like he can agree with Hassan and see the issues. But remember that this is happening isolated in a bubble. And this is just at the end of the day, like YouTube drama. But Hassan is the biggest political streamer. But people keep saying, like, he's not the one. But he seems to be the best one in terms of his reputation, whether you like it or not. Show me somebody better who in their personal and private public life is doing kind of better than Hassan in this sense, without being a complete liberal dem who's, like, adhering to, like, the standard quo. Because, again, he's trying to actually change things. So show me someone who's trying to change things for the better, who has a better public reputation. Because I'm telling you right now, I'm struggling to find somebody, which we'll get into later in today's stream, because I think um, this is something Hassan's talked about, something Phillips talked about, like conservatives are very good at social media. 
They have a lot, but that's because they don't have a standard. The reason conservatives are so good at social media is because they're hanging out with Aiden Ross, Trump, and all these other pieces of shit losers because they don't have a standard. They don't care if he rapes somebody. All they care about is like, well, but will you lower my taxes? And yeah, he won't. But he'll tell you he will. Okay? Attacks on civilians, in addition to immense suffering caused by siege tactics, deliberate attacks on civilians and civilian objects cause unimaginable misery. The government and Hezbollah forces burned the agricultural fields just as a form of punishment, even though we couldn't access them. I don't have an issue with them. Once again, sounds like what Israel's doing in Gaza. As of May 21, a minimum of 580- See how, how Ethan's trying to say like, oh, I see, I'm, I'm anti-Hezbollah and Israel, but like, you're not, bro. Thousand people is estimated to have been killed, with 13 million Syrians being displaced and 7 million refugees forced to flee Syria. I don't have an issue with them, let's just say. Here's some quotes from Hezbollah leaders, including Narshala. Our struggle will end only when this entity, if Israel, is obliterated. We recognize no treaty with it, no ceasefire, and no peace agreement. According to Shal Shai, Nasara said in a speech delivered in Beirut, What do the Jews want? They Maiden says that's not actually true about his wife. Which part? Tell us. Ripped off his wife. Wait, Einstein ripped off his wife without giving her credit? So I don't know. Oh, sorry. I was reading chat. My bad. My bad. I thought you were talking about Ela. You know, I thought you were talking about Ela. I have heard rumors that a lot of women did contribute to their husband's work. But whether or not that's been proven, we don't know yet. But we all I know is that this we do not know history the way we think we do. This is actually a good example. There's like this conversation that needs to be had about how we've contributed to ideas, how we share ideas, who gets the credit. Let's be real. In a misogynistic world, no woman's going to get the credit, right? Yeah. Zelda Fitzgerald. Absolutely. I've been to the museum and he absolutely ripped off Zelda. Absolutely. But a lot of it was the times and that we have to talk about that because right now we're living in a similar time where women aren't given the credit. Excuse me. What have my haters said about me? Oh, I can't believe anybody would listen to Bernie Simon. I couldn't imagine it. What's her qualification? And then they bring up Destiny as if he's more qualified for me. Destiny spends his time debating conservative losers who aren't even mainstream anymore. Why is he more qualified to talk about the human experience? Is it because he has such a bad one with it? Like, what is your problem? And by the way, for those joking that Destiny and Ethan are going to do a collab soon, I wouldn't be surprised. But just a warning, just a warning. Okay. That I think it does matter what you do in your personal life and political life. I think it does matter. And remember that Destiny is willing to do whatever it takes to win. Even if that means playing dirty. And if you think that's okay, that's on you. Because that's one stance I do not agree with. I'm not willing to do whatever it takes to win, including playing dirty. And that's the difference. If you want to play dirty politics, sure. Go ahead and side with Destiny. But that's dirty politics right there. Okay? And that's the problem. They want security and money. Throughout history, the Jews have been all its most cowardly and avaricious creatures. If you look all over the world, you will find no one more miserly and greedily than they are. I don't have an issue with them. If we search the entire world for a person more cowardly, despicable, weak, and feeble in psych, mind, and ideology and religion, we would not find anyone like the Jew. Notice, I do not say the Israeli. Okay, that's pretty bad. Anti-Semitism, bad, guys. Anti-Semitism, super bad. Okay, but keep in mind, and just a reminder, okay, that it, I think this is the problem. Okay, super bad. Yes, we're all pretty brave. Anti-Semitism, very, 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 very bad. Yes, we all agree. Okay. Racism, no matter how it's disguised, really, really bad. And just a reminder that America disguises its racism all of the time. She's just not smart enough. I just feel like she doesn't have good policy. I just feel like she's kind of loud. I just kind of feel like she's kind of bossy. I just kind of feel like she doesn't know what she's doing. Mm hmm. I just kind of feel like I don't relate to her. I just kind of feel like her culture is different from mine. I just kind of feel like. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Again, I don't need you to bluntly say it to know what you're saying, whether you know it or not. Okay. Anti Semitism, bad. Any anti Semitism, Islamophobia in my chat, I will block you. Okay. I will block you. You better be careful. I don't want no racists in my chat. I don't have an issue with them. Badi Kainban in his 23 October 2002 article quoted Nar I don't know when Hassan is speaking about it. I don't know if things have changed. I don't know. This feels like these are all articles from like 2012, 2002, 1980. Look, all political groups have corruption. All of them. And all of them have murdered people on behalf of those political groups. All of them. So when we have big ones, we're talking about the big players, guys. No offense. I'm talking about people that like are 
men and violently using means of power to like take over. Okay. So like caveat, but I need to know the context of what Hassan even means by that statement. And the same way I would need context for somebody saying like, I love America. It's like, do, do you mean that? Like I love America in what way though? Right. Like in what way do you like the like racist parts or the homophobic parts? Or like when you say you want America to be great again, do you mean like in the traditional way? Or do you mean like, what do you mean by that? I just, I don't know. I need to know what you mean by that. Right. And yes, we will be going over Ethan's basement after this. Marshala as saying, if Jews all gather in Israel, it will save us the trouble of going after them worldwide. The history of Jews has. Yeah, really bad. Just like those two Israeli boys who said if they could press a button and kill every Palestinian, they would. And those people work with Netanyahu. OK, so again, again, when we're having these conversations. Bad, all bad. The question is, what do we do and what's the option? Because right now the option is going after like Hassan which makes no sense when you're also parroting like Israeli propaganda. Like you, I think people are forgetting like this is the information you have. By the way, is this the damning information that y'all sent me that like Hassan is anti-American? P.S. First Amendment rights, democracy. America is so unique because we get to criticize our government while paying tax. That's what America is, baby. You can't be anti-American for speaking your mind. You can be anti-American if you're funding opposition if you're participating in some sort of uh illegal activity that truly is at the expense of american lives obviously don't do that but realistically like um having a political position wanting america to change that's not anti-american that is america baby freedom of speech bitch proven that regardless of the zionist proposal that's why the aclu was able to defend nazis and their right to speak because that's how america is we are unique in a way that other places are not like in Croatia, where I live, you can't even be, you can't even, even hint your pro-Nazi here. You can get in trouble. They don't have free speech laws, which is valid as well, of course, who wants to be neighbors with a Nazi. But in America, in America, we're so free speech that you can be a Nazi. Okay? That is very unique to America. So they are a people who are evil in their ideas. The state of the grandsons of apes and pigs, the Zionist Jews, and he condemns them as the murderers of the prophet. According to this is in 1988. These all these quotes are in 1998. And yes, like these are all bad things. These are in 2000. On Nasrallah, he said the Jews invented the legend of the Nazi atrocities. I don't have an issue with them. Let's just say. So my point is, if you're going to come down so hard on Ela for what she said, where's the energy when Hassan defends Hezbollah and Hassan Nasrallah, who is a violent genocidal anti-semite who mass murdered syrians and committed terrorism all around the world where's all the eight year subscribers flooding into his community saying they can't follow him in these i mean for sure if they feel that way they should unsubscribe like i said like i watch hassan in the way that i watch everyone i do disagree with him on some of his stances but i can see where he's coming from in the same way that i can see where ethan's coming from but just for the record if you're new to my audience i take a pretty radical stance against violence like i do not justify any means of violence I like self-defense is the only conversation I'm willing to have. And it has to be direct and in the moment. It can't be out of retaliation. So like I have to take a pretty strong stance. And again, I'm not making a prescription. I'm just saying ethically and morally where I stand. I would like to see a world that doesn't have to turn to violence. But again, I think Ethan is and Hassan are both open to violence if it makes sense to their brains, which is pretty normal for political commentator. Most political commentators take a radical stance that violence is necessary. I take a radical stance that it's unnecessary, but it's what humans choose to do because they can't think any harder of what to do else. Like, again, I'm very focused on the philosophy on this channel. So I just want to make it clear, like I do not support any form of violence. A violent, well, any form of violence. Mm, see, now the conservatives are going to take me out of context. I believe in protest. I believe in your right to protest, your right to state things. I believe in your right to express your anger. I do not believe in your right to advocate for the violent, like aggression towards other people, physical violence, not okay. Okay. Blowing up buildings, not okay. People over things always, but I just want to make it clear, right? That I think violence is not the answer. Footsteps anymore. I can't believe I'm calling Nasrallah base. I mean, listen, listen, you have to remember. You have to remember something, okay? A lot of these dudes, you see them in their fucking fits, and you hear- The quote on the screen is, Israel used to be a tool at the hands of the British. Well, that's just true. 
hear about like some of their attitudes about like gay people, for example, and you immediately fucking resort to orientalist perspectives, not realizing that these motherfuckers are better read than you by a million. Okay. Like it's not, no, it's not a broken clock situation. No, dude, half of these dudes literally get educated in America and in the UK. What the fuck are you guys talking about? That is actually true, too. I think people forget like a lot of what you would call like Arabs. They are Western educated and they come to these conclusions. The problem is Western people aren't also Eastern educated. They're not they're not. Edu That's why like the debate bros always question Dr. K because he's brown and because he's like comes from Eastern philosophy because they're not educated in both. But people who are educated in both. I think they do understand why America is such a problem. I think they do understand why people feel such a strong way about it, right? Chat says, are you against the state using violence to uphold laws within its borders? Um, depending on how it's executed, almost always, yes. Are you against the state using violence to uphold laws within its borders? Almost always, yes. Because I think that it never has the proper amount of balance with it. And I think they should be very careful in how they're exhibiting and expressing that power. And I don't think they're responsible enough to do it. And I think there are better ways to create harmony between the state and its people. You are here for us. We pay your salaries. We need to great, create a better harmony between the two communities. We shouldn't feel like we're separate, but we do. And so we have to figure that out. But if you keep using the military and police as a means to scare protesters and to scare people and to threaten people from speaking up, then it's going to start to become an us versus them narrative, right? And so that's a problem. This is why it's orientalist to literally look at these dudes and go, oh, no, they're fucking barbaric baboons. And like sometimes they get this shit right. No, dude, he knows. It's crazy. He's read more books than you could ever imagine. And also, ultimately, he is regarded as a pretty brilliant uh, a person. In terms of like everything that he's done, you might not agree with his methods. You might not agree with his attitude overall in terms of like. Uh, in terms of his, his social, his opinions on, on civil liberties and shit like that. But ultimately, this motherfucker has read a shit ton of books. I don't have an issue with them. Let's just. Uh, Hassan De uh, no, no, Sahala, I can't say his name, defies UN back tr tribunal arrest warrants for four Hezbollah members wanted for 2005 assassination. Okay, so I just want to say this. I disagree with Hassan that this man is ethically correct if that's his stance though i didn't hear him say that but i i assume he's a smart man in the same way that i assume trump is smart because you just don't get where you are unless you have some sort of intelligence like it's not hard for me to say that trump is smart even if i think he's an idiot because i think i'm smart but i know i'm an idiot and i know you're smart but i also know you're an idiot right like don't fuck with me you're fucking stupid and the same way hassan said it the other day about himself we're all stupid Okay, I've read over 2,000 plus books. I stopped counting after 2,000. I'm an idiot, but I also know you're an idiot. The fact that the U.S. president has to speak to us at a sixth grade level, don't fuck with me right now. Okay, don't fuck with me. Smart people can make decisions that you disagree with every day. Okay? So again, with peace and love, the American people literally need to be talked to at a sixth grade fucking reading level. Don't talk to me about who's smart and who's stupid. We're all smart and we're all very stupid. Okay? And that's the point. Everybody thinks smart means introspective. Intelligence and introspection are not the same thing. Do I think Trump is very introspective? No. I do not. Okay? But that's not the same thing. And if you think there's the same, that that's the same thing, that ma'am, time to face yourself. Okay? Say. That it? That's the video? Okay. So for the people who sent this to me and said it's obvious that Hassan is anti-American, I don't know what you mean by that. So I'm going to need you to recontextualize that for me, if you would like, because I don't know what part of that video showed me that he was anti-American, right? Like, I'm not sure what that meant to you. I'm not sure what you saw. I'm not sure what you thought that video was going to show me. That is Ethan's latest video on Hassan. It just came out where he calls Hassan a liar. I think Ethan needs therapy. I think he needs to calm down. I think he's suffering. I think he's suffering unwisely. 
Okay. Now to bounce off this conversation, we're going to go to Ethan's basement, which is a fan channel. And they actually recently came out and said, I can't support Ethan anymore and gave a pretty good argument allegedly about it. I don't know. I haven't watched it. I'm here to watch it with you. So let's see what they have to say, because I've been aware of Ethan's basement for a while. That's the name of the channel. Was kind of surprised that even the fan channels have to come out and say something. Hey, it's been a while since I saw my face. I haven't been doing so great, so I took a little break. So a lot of people are saying some things about me that are quite true. Doesn't matter if it's true though. Just as long as it's entertaining to you. Twitch has an anti-Semitism problem. Post Hassan Piker. Here, good you challenge him to do better than this. In this video, I just want to explain why I stopped watching H3 over the past few months. What made me go from a pretty big fan of the show to, I guess, what Ethan would call a fallen fan. I've always known Ethan had his shortcomings and I could usually look past them and, and still enjoy the show, but lately, it's been way too much. The hypocrisy and double standards have just piled up. So I figured, why not make a video about this to highlight what's been bothering me and why after all these years, I've decided to stop supporting Ethan. Why are people mad at me? I want someone please to explain it. Explain why you're mad at me. Go ahead, I, I'm dying, please. Tell me why, I'd love to know why. If you are actually articulated why you're mad at me, it wouldn't make any sense. So I'm dying. Please write it. Not even disagreeing, frankly, just trying to have a conversation. So in, in short, you know, suck my dick. Echo chamber. Echo chamber. Echo chamber. Echo chamber. So Ethan has been on a crusade against several creators, including his former co-host Hassan. And recently he's criticized Hassan specifically for not watching the videos or addressing the points Ethan raised against him. They're talking a lot about my former co-host Hassan Piker and leveling some pretty serious criticism against him. I knew that he wasn't gonna take it well and wasn't gonna respond to any of the points made. In fact, Hassan, I'm sad to say, <sighs> did not watch any of, he didn't watch a single point I made. Instead, he took to saying that I'm crazy. But about a month ago, I recall Ethan having a melt. Just remember, because I think like, I don't know if he's going to cover it in this video. That one of the reasons I warmed up to Hassan was how kind he was towards Ethan. And I know for some of you guys, you might not have seen it at the time. But when Ethan was having his breakdowns over October 7th and for this last year, Hassan has been supportive. And every clip I've seen of Hassan being supportive has never showed up in an Ethan stream. Which is why I'm thinking Ethan is either being fed misinformation, he's accepting the misinformation, or his team is deliberately keeping it from him, which I think is horrible. But if you're watching the same Hassan that I've been watching, he has said time and time again, like he was so warm towards Ethan. In the same video where he supports Frogan, he also supported Ethan. And so a part of me knows that Ethan is just hearing what's he, what he wants to hear, which we've all been guilty of at some point in our life, right? We've all had that We've all had that problem happen. So again, my heart goes out to Ethan for his suffering. I just think he's suffering unwisely and it is causing more harm to himself and his community, right? And if Ethan wants to move communities again, which a lot of us as YouTubers do, he can do that. But this is a good example of a part of his community doing their best to express themselves. Now, would Ethan watch this whole video? I don't know. We've seen Ethan time and time again, have a really hard time getting through people's videos. And he'll even say like, who has time to watch all these videos? Well, pe people who are doing the research, right? down over a video made about him from a smaller creator called North Star Radio. So let's see if Ethan watched it and how he responded to the points made in the video. This dude, Comrade Casey, okay, he made a video <laughs> about the end of Leftovers. I haven't watched the whole thing. It's long as fuck and I generally don't like watching videos like this because it's usually depressing. See, I don't like watching videos like this. It's depressing. He can't get through a video and he'll say like, I don't have time for this. Look, I watch a lot of content. I watch a lot because I'm like kind of, this is probably like my neurodivergency, but I have to know the context and I feel really bad not knowing it. Even though I do review things without knowing the full context, we just like caveat it with that. But Ethan is implying and giving the impression that he like knows the context, but how can you know? And this feels so familiar to me when you're a minority person trying to explain your plight to people and everyone's like, why are gay people so worried about things? Like you're literally everywhere. Everyone's gay now. No, we're not. And I don't know what your algorithm is showing you, but people are getting fired for being gay. So we have to pay attention to those details. We have to pay attention to the fact that like, there is like an experience we're having at different layers that are, it's gonna be very hard for people to understand. And that's the, that's what I think is ultimately happening with bubbles is like, we're not seeing each other because we're coming from totally different perspectives, but all of our children cry and bleed and starve the same. And we have to really think about that. 
bring back the Ethan Klein channel. Um, Bro, are you okay? I mean, all jokes aside, I mean, clearly not. Uh-huh. Like, I feel so of two minds about all this stuff. Because, like, obviously, you know, from a practical standpoint, these people, their level of obsession and harassment is a detriment to our lives. But, like, that's when you, you see under the mask and you see the person and just, like, there's Listen, obviously a lot going on. I'm out of sympathy. I yeah, I Fuck got it. Guy and I don't need this guy forever. You don't need to have this sideways. I got you. As you can see, instead of watching the video, Ethan's first reaction is to go through the creator's Reddit account and show his audience some of his old comments. I hope you are starting to understand my point, but again, here's Ethan a few days ago calling out uh, Hassan. Now, instead of actually addressing a single point, he stops it before he gets there. I hope it's clear to everybody just how bad faith this is right now and how desperately he's trying not to respond to any of the actual criticism that I've made. But let's see, maybe Ethan will give this video one more chance. After all, he's the one that brought it up during the podcast. Well, Twitch streamer on the platform was blown. Oh, hey guys, what's yeah. up? I'm North Star Kami Radio, and <laughs> Ethan's a Zionist pick. It's like, it's, it's like Charlie, but like, not funny. <laughs> so yeah, 12 seconds in, and um, Ethan stops it to make a personal attack, and um, that's it. He won't show anything else from the video, and instead wow. we'll go back to Reddit to comb through his comment history. So anyway, this guy who made this video that's like super weird and biased towards Hassan, and is like mega Kami, tanky, so this guy looked into him. So a video he hasn't watched is brother. Okay, chat says so really both of these people, Ethan and Hassan, are doing the same exact thing. They are framing the same info they have to fit their narratives. Everybody does this, but I do think some people are closer to the truth than other people. And I think in this instance, Hassan is more towards the truth than Ethan is. But we all do this. So this is what I love about people is we all are somewhat close to the truth. So okay, if you're new to my channel, I don't believe that we have access to objective truth personally. I think we have an idea of what it could be because it coincides with what I believe is like perceived harmony amongst human beings as a species. But generally speaking, we have subjective understanding of the world through perception. So our brains calculate information and we like move back and forth with that conversation and we misunderstand each other because of our disconnects and the differences of those perceptions, those bubbles. Right. But I think that there are, there are groups of people that are closer to the truth because they involve the conversation more like, I was watching a lesbian TikTok on studs in the community. And the fact that she knew what a stud was within the black context, within the black community context of the word stud, meant she had more information than a lesbian who doesn't have that information. So a lesbian who does, doesn't have that information on what a stud is might just assume a stud is a mask female. But there's a, there's a whole racial context uh, uh, to this to this thing, this word called stud. Same with the word queer. It's it's just a word to some people, but to other people, it's a signifying representation of the discrimination and subjugation of the queer community that used queerness to liberate themselves out of that, right? And not that we're not still working on it, but everyone's coming from a uh, like a perspective. Again, it, you take it back to the very basic white person who says, I don't see color. They're trying not to be racist, but by not trying to be racist, they're also ra- like erasing the nuance of the fact that you can't not not see color, you know? So the idea of it is really beautiful. Like I don't see color, but when you don't see color, you don't see people's lived experience. You don't see their relationship with, with racism. You don't see what their struggle might look like. You think, Oh, we're just all the same. I see everybody as the same, but we're not all the same because we have different experiences. Now, philosophically, we're all the same. We're born free, but we, we are all the same in terms of our value but we're not having the same experience. And when you don't have the same experiences growing up, your brain forms differently. You have a different relationship with your life. You end up emotional on the internet posting about Hassan. You know what I'm saying? You serial cheat on your partners. You're not present parents. You're not participating in a way that's within reason. You know, you're having sort of a dysregulated experience, which is fair. I'm not, I'm not shaming you for that, but I want you to know like hurt people hurt people for a reason. And all of us are hurting. Every single person on this planet is hurting. And so every single person, like the world is a reflection of us as a whole back to us. The world is a reflection of a whole. And it's a reflection of us. We are all participants. I have done this. I have used horrible rhetoric in my past. I have learned from it. I'm trying to get better. But I have also contributed. And I will continue to contribute, obviously without intention. But hey, the road, you know, the road to hell is paved with your intentions whether you think about it or not whether it's intentional or not like your actions contribute to how people are socializing so we're not perfect i am not asking you to be perfect i am never asking you to be perfect i'm asking you to be aware of how imperfect you are and even with that said 
Imperfect people can be more on the side of truth than you would believe. And some of us are. Some people are more aligned with what's true, even if it's subjective, than other people. Okay? Is apparently super weird and biased towards Hassan, but of course Ethan doesn't have to watch or show the video. It's way more effective to just tell his audience that this guy's a communist, so his points don't matter. This is a classic Tim Pool move, by the way. So let's go back to Ethan's recent video calling out Hassan. You can see there's layers and layers and layers of character, character assassination, propaganda, um, logical fallacies, and not one response to any of the points that I've actually made. And it seems obvious to me that he's trying to poison his audience against me. Character assassination and not one response to the actual criticisms? I really wonder who would do that. This fucking doughy white bitch <laughs> is making content that is uh, biased against me. And also apparently he hates Jewish people. Comrade Casey, you bitch ass weirdo. You look like a weirdo and I don't hate mustaches, but man, that's a weirdo mustache. <clears throat> so this guy looked into him. This guy who runs North Star Radio, Comrade Casey, uh, they found his Reddit account. He's a big Hassan fan and clearly developed a deep hatred for Ethan and Ela since October 7th. So he's made a video about Ethan that he hasn't watched because it's too long, but he took the time to look into him and read every comments this guy's ever posted. And that's what Ethan will focus on to debunk the video. Now here's Ethan just a few days ago complaining that Hassan should watch the videos he made about him instead of relying on his chat to tell him what was said in these videos. He didn't watch any of it. He's basing this based on like, I guess, chat. And you know, it's like, what do you, Talk about it or don't, man, you know? Don't do this shit. Let's see if Ethan would rely on other people to watch the videos for him, because I have a big problem with this next clip. He made a video. I haven't watched the whole thing, it's long as fuck, and I think everybody noticed as they were watching through it. Just even... times to it, bro. It's an hour long. Times to it and take a shit, you'll be done with the video. You know what I mean? Like, boys sit on the toilet for 45 minutes for some reason, y'all gotta figure that out, it's not good for you. But like, it's an hour long video. Just like times to it and sit on the toilet, I guess. You're gonna do it anyways. You know, just listen, take a shower, listen to the video, bro. Just like make some pasta and listen to the video. And Hassan, I think, commented on it that this video is a little fucking weird. Yeah. You were, Nate, you, you had mentioned you had watched it. Yeah, I saw the whole thing. It is um, <laughs> biased towards Hassan. Even, even Hassan was getting like frustrated watching it and he was confused and he's like, this is fucking weird. Yeah, Hassan didn't like the video at all, from what I recall. He, he thought it was weird, and the more it went on, the more he kind of like disliked it. I was so disappointed by the crew when I saw that. I don't know if it's just bad faith or if they also didn't really watch Hassan's reaction, but I will show you a clip of him uh, talking about this video. Um, what is it? Oh, I gotta go. I gotta finish. I'll finish this tomorrow. I gotta do the podcast. Personal news-wise, I ended the broadcast. Uh, we watched a YouTube video that was really good, and I highly recommend you guys check it out, despite... Uh, Comrade Casey in the chat, uh, also known as I believe North Star Radio. Is that what it is? That was YouTube name is I forget. Since we were talking about Hassan's chat, let's talk about it more because that's one of the main point of criticism Ethan has. He thinks his chat should challenge him more. It makes me sad that people let people in his audience let him get away with this types of like hand waving. And once again, if you're a Hassan fan, challenge him to do better than this. This is this is this is dishonest. And, and more than that, I'd like for him to just respond to one of the points I made just directly. The do better part of this statement is really important because we recently had a great example of Ethan being challenged by his own chat to do better. Truly disgusting, disappointed you and the crew. Do better, the crew. If you had a dog, y'all wouldn't have thought twice, but it was a cat and you don't care. Shut up, you fucking freak, weirdo, loser. So following Ethan's logic, how does he react to his own audience when no. they try to hold him accountable? He often uses two techniques. Here's the first one. <laughs> Ethan turns off comments. That's like one of the things that he does, which, you know, listen, I delete comments. I block people. Like I have a very strict idea of what safe space I want for my audience here. You know, I don't want no Trump 2024 is in my audience, bro. If I see you write Trump 2024, I'm blocking you. Not because I don't think Trump voters deserve dignity or safety or low taxes or food or anything else, but because I just don't need you in my space. Okay. Like with peace and love, this is the one space on the internet I get to come to speak to people that are trying to be a little bit more progressive in life. Okay. So, you know, just keep that in mind. But I think some content creators are trying to make, like build the biggest, largest audience as possible. And I'm, I'm not trying to do that. Right. But I do think Ethan is trying to build the largest audience possible that agrees with him. And when he gets involved in politics, he has to understand like people are going to disagree with you. Like they're going to disagree with you. Right. And he can't, he doesn't like it. Now, I do think this is mental health. So this is where my empathy comes in. And I go, hey, 
I know how hard it is when someone's audience is making content about you and berating you and threatening your life. It is the scariest and most unnerving part about being a content creator. And it's scary because like I'm a small content creator who will have this happen to her thanks to Destiny's community, one of the most toxic communities that I never would have said that if it didn't happen to me. I never would have thought anything bad about this man unless he told me his secrets, which are horrible. And unless his community tried to bombard my community, which by the way, mods, if they start coming in, block them. But I never would have believed this about Destiny unless it happened. Because I didn't know behind closed doors he was being as disgusting of a person as I realized he was being. And I know people won't believe me because the things that are public already don't matter. People won't believe me because you voted for Trump to be president. He literally bragged about assaulting women and you still voted for him. So it doesn't matter if people speak up against these people like you won't believe them. Right. But it is one of those things that people have to take into consideration. It is a very difficult thing to face, except Hassan and Destiny and Ethan are millionaires. That's the difference. These communities are going after non-millionaires. It's not like Hassan, Destiny, or Ethan are like struggling for money. They have millions. They're millionaires. They go on podcasts and talk about how they're millionaires, right? That is very different. That is very different than these small content creators that are being bombarded by their audiences. And they don't care because they perpetuate the beliefs. Now, again, I think Ethan and Hassan are both big players in the game and they have to learn how to handle each other. I think Hassan's doing a much better job at it than Ethan is. And that's why I say my empathy is with him. He needs to talk to a therapist off the internet. He needs to, he needs to realize like, hey, this job is, you know, scary. This job is um, intense. This job is dangerous. But also, uh, uh, you know, we have to decide how we feel about our, our participation in it. And if it's good for us, if it really is good for us, if it's good for our mental health. And for Ethan right now, I just don't think it's good for his mental health. But I would love to see Ethan come back healthy and regulated and excited to be back. I would love for that to be the case. But that's not what's happening right now. And that's the problem. Hassan isn't the one who's dysregulated. It's Ethan. And so I don't know how much of this stuff is what he really like, if this is the way he wants to go about expressing himself, right? Also, here's a clip I found interesting from just a few days before they turned off comments on all their recent videos. It's just too good. He also started have, um... turning off replies. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that's cringy. Yeah. Logan did? Logan turned off replies. Oh, yeah. you know you lost. Yeah. You that. That's rough. Yeah. That's rough. <laughs> But apparently another problem Ethan has with Hassan is how he sometimes loses it and yells at his chat. I fucking despise all of you, dude. And you know, is it really cute the way that he like says crazy shit to his chat? I don't. You have to remember Ethan's chat adores him. Hassan's chat is also full of haters. Political streamers have usually a mixture of haters who watch and not. But even even Asmin has this kind of audience where. Asmin's always blocking people. Hassan blocks people. I block people. Ethan, I think Ethan thinks in his head your audience is supposed to love you. From my understanding, I could be wrong. But I feel like Ethan thinks his audience is supposed to be like his friends somehow. But like Hassan knows a lot of the people in his chat are combative. They're, so when he's talking to people, I mean, I do it too. Where I'm like, hey, not my core audience, but hey, like, you know, it's like you're not only people who like you are watching you. That's not how it works on the internet. So it feels like maybe there's a confusion there. I'm not sure though. Like, I'm, I'm not sure. I think it's really that cute. I don't know why people let him get away with that. Now let's see how Ethan responded to the pushback from his chat the day after he made jokes about Aaron Bushnell, who set himself on fire in front of the Israeli embassy. And I want to remind you, the people in the live chat are all paying members. Well, unless I'm misunderstanding, tell me why. I'd love to know why. What I saw Because some... you made fun of him burning. Okay, dummy. I joke about all this shit every fucking day. And now all of a sudden you got to get your Oh, wow, Ethan. Wow. Get all bitched out. Like give me a break, dude. You know, suck my fucking dick. Ethan, Ethan, don't let them suck your dick. They're going to get Marxist herpes all over it. Trust me. I itch monthly. Ethan, don't. <laughs> give me a fucking break. Look in the mirror, loser. You're the problem. You are the problem. You are. Fuck you. Fuck you people. So why are you expressing such dumb fucking thoughts in my chat? Go somewhere else. Like seriously, if you're that sensitive. So give me a fucking break. Who's the problem? Scumbag. Scumbag. Oof. So you're a fake Oof. fucking fan. Fuck you. Oh, so you're a fake fucking fan if you disagree with me, you know? And that's what's frustrating. Like that's what Ethan is so funny about is like, okay. And listen, if you're sick of these people in your chat, just block them. Just be like, bro, you're ruining the mood. I'm not into it. 
But it's the fact that he thinks like he has the moral high ground, which is funny. Get lost. I'm sick of it. But maybe it's just the chat that is overly sensitive, right? Ethan is known to make edgy jokes and to make fun of all different. And by the way, I don't really think I'd care much if he was name calling in general. Like I, I don't care too much in the same way. I don't care when Hassan does it or when Asmin does it or when I do it. I think it's the idea that he's going after Hassan for the same shit he does. Where I'm like, no, no, you don't get the moral high ground here. That's what it is. It's like you cannot take the moral high ground here. That's not what's happening. Like you either accept that you're a toxic streamer like everybody else or you try to pretend otherwise. But like, no, no, you don't get to you don't get to take the moral high ground. OK, groups of people. We call it goblin mode. And that's why people love true. Him. Go somewhere else. Like, seriously, if you're that sensitive that you need to go the f away and go to a community that is going to just tell you everything you want to hear all the time and never make you feel uncomfy. There's plenty of them out there. Go. It's really annoying that like people just they stand. But this is a common narrative and everybody goes through this phase. I've gone through it. You've gone through it. I call it the centrist anti-woke stage where you basically start saying like, man, nobody wants the truth, man. I'm the only one who's going to say the truth. Nobody wants to be uncomfortable. I'm going to make you uncomfortable. Um, yes, sometimes it's about being uncomfortable and sometimes it's about you just being wrong. But also what is wrong, right? So when I, every time I think to myself, oh, that person is wrong. I ask myself, Brittany, when you say wrong, what do you mean? Do you mean wrong through your own personal values, which are subjective? Do you mean wrong versus what they're saying informationally? Do you mean wrong in terms of what they've said prior and now? Are they being hypocritical? Do you mean wrong in terms of the context of the bubble, the perception, all of it? Like, that's the thing is like when I say someone's wrong, I try to say, OK, but how are they wrong? Because wrong is a subjective narrative. Wrong and right only exist through the subjective narrative. So we have to decide, like, what do we mean when we say wrong? What do you mean when you say wrong? Or what do you mean, Ethan? I just, I'm not sure. What do, you, what do you mean by God? Is God ever wrong? Or is he just trans? Who really knows? By, like, just waiting for any reason to call me. And by the way, why? Because I made one stupid, um, insensitive joke. If you can't deal with it, then... You know, you're a f hypocrite because I make these jokes about all different topics, about all different sensitive things, about all different groups of people, every fucking show. And then when it lightly brushes on your shoulder, you freak the fuck out and you bitch and you cry and you go and you try to find any reason to, to you know what I mean? To get. Wait, 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 wait. Chat, 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 chat. Chat says. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Who said it? Where did it go? I don't think Ela would still be married to Ethan if she ever pushed back on him. She agrees with him. Don't get me wrong. I'm pretty sure they're on the same page. They are deeply in love. They are deeply each other's person. They are soulmates. They agree with each other. They are probably the only people talking to each other. That's why they're not listening to anyone else. I guarantee you, Ethan and Ela are 100% on the same page. Don't get it twisted. They are a team through and through. I am under no misunderstanding or illusion that Ela disagrees with Ethan. There's no reason. I think even more than that, she wants him to speak up for her because she doesn't want to do it. Even more than this, I think she's allowing him to speak up for her, which is fair. Okay. I just, I think they're soulmates. I think they're in love. I think they really agree with each other. And hey, that's called being on the same page as your partner. At least their marriage is good. At least their marriage is good. You know, you want to be on the same page in terms of values with your spouse. So I guess that's good. <laughs> Angry. After hearing all that, I wonder how Ethan would react if he was the subject of a joke. Like he said, he makes jokes about all different groups of people. He's a free speech absolutist after all. It's a panel hosted by Frogan and four of her friends in which they have a tier list where they rate people where good is Arab and bottom is loves Sabra. Sabra is a very popular uh, hummus brand. I know in Israel, it's pretty much in everybody's refrigerator and it's kosher. They're an American company, but they've been the subject of the pro-Palestine boycott. I mean, it's kind of just Arab good, Jew bad. Even Klein. <laughs> I told you guys to Klein. <laughs> this is a good reaction. That was a good one. <laughs> We're very proud of you, Denim, for bringing anti semitism <sighs> Chat, when you say the IDF is not terrorist, I don't know what you mean by that. And I don't know what you. I don't know what you mean by that. But if you don't think the IDF has carried out terrorist attacks on the Palestinian people, uh, I might just block you for it, honestly, because you're really ruining the vibe. Like, listen, I don't want to deconstruct it for you. 
but you have to think about how that feels when you when you experience like the IDF coming into your neighborhood and taking over everything. You said it's an army. That's what every everyone is a part of. That's everything, though. So, OK, then you agree that like like all of these Middle Eastern, quote, terrorist groups aren't terrorists, right? They're just in a war. I'm just like I'm just like making sure. OK, like, are you also saying that, like, all of the groups that the IDF says they're fighting against are not terrorists? They're like the Houthis and stuff and Hezbollah and all these people. Are they just fighting a war or are they terrorists? Are they just like fighting for their beliefs or like the terrorists? OK, because like that's the difference is you call it an army. So you decide they're not terrorists. And I say army or not is terrorism. OK, army or not, it sounds pretty terrorist to me. But hey, that's my opinion. That's my opinion. OK. I'm right on stage and you guys are killing it. And may I point out here, Chevron, Capcom and Samsung. Do you know? that there is an Arab to Jew tier list happening in front of your sponsor. This tier list isn't about being Jewish at all. Not only is one of the panelists Jewish, but in the Love Sabra category, people from all different races and religions were included alongside Ethan. It's more about not knowing much about Arabic culture and therefore eating shitty hummus. What is it? Ramadan what? Lena. Yeah, Ramadan. Exactly. The Lebanon pagers and um, talkies is terrorism, bruv. Oh, that was an that was the clearest act of terrorism. If you need any other example, that's not just them being sly and good at war, bro. Right? Like that's a problem. If you're in the political bubble, which I think is such a short, it's such a limiting bubble. If you're in the political bubble, you're going to be very particular about definition, so you can get away with terrorizing people's children. And that's the problem with politics. Remember, it's not about morals. Politics is about winning. It is not about what's morally correct. Okay. It is about winning. So politics will do this thing where it's like, oh, we're not the terrorists because we wear suits and we're very dignified and blah, 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 as they're bombing your children. Okay. It's not okay. So again, when we have these conversations, I've been there. Okay. I've been a Republican. I've been a conservative. I've been a liberal. I've been a Democrat. I've been a progressive. I've been all like, I'm 35 years old. I've had a long journey in politics since I was a baby. There's a video of me at like in 2000 saying, I'm going to vote for George Bush. And I'm like 10 years old. Okay. Well, however old I was at the time. I've been in politics my whole life. My, my family is incredibly political. I've worked with people in talk radio. I've canvassed. I've protested. I've cleaned up streets. Let me tell you this. If politics was about morals, I would have stayed. It is about winning. And they will win some of them at any cost. The cost to life, the cost to reputation, whatever it takes. And that's the problem with politics. That's the problem with politics. Chat says, wait, the Patriots attacked technically terrorists. Didn't it only target members of Hezbollah? No. Lots of people had those pagers. Doctors, people, everyday people. And what you think they were able to make sure that none of the pagers ended up in the hands of no civilian? Civilians were impacted. Children died. So, oh my gosh, well, like the pagers were only given to terrorists. Okay. Okay. Sure. And that's the problem with Western media is they convince you, oh, no, no, no. The pagers only went to the terrorists. Sure. And the bombs when we hit hospitals and schools in Palestine, only killing terrorists. Please be serious. We have to be serious. They don't care at the expense of your children. They will win this war. Israel, at the cost of everybody else, will protect Israel. And you must understand this. And this is politics. This is politics. And it's immoral. It is immoral. But politically, you always want to be on the side that wins, right? But at the expense of who? At the expense of who? This is why it's hard to be a human. There's no solution to our chaos as a species who are, who are here because of happenstance, probably. Who knows? And if you're new to my channel, and again, you're coming from the political bubble, you have to understand that I'm coming from a very particular perspective in which I do not believe in God. I do not believe that we were put here on the planet for a particular reason. I do not believe in simulations or magic or any of these things. I simply believe that we exist probably through a means of evolution, but who knows? And we're having a biological experience. And so we have to accept that violence is a part of that biological experience, but you can have a more introspective relationship with your biological experience. And that is what I would encourage you to do. But if you do that, you will become less violent. And if you become less violent, you might lose a couple of wars. And then if you 
are afraid of losing those wars, you might decide I'm not going to become more introspective because I'd rather want to win a war. Okay. I understand your desire to win a war at the expense of everybody else because you want to protect your families. How can you blame them for trying to do the same thing? How can you blame them for wanting to do the same thing? No matter how they carry it out, don't you understand they're doing the same thing? So when you justify your means of violence, you have to understand they're doing the same thing. And both of you are wrong. In my opinion. Ramadan Kareem or Ramadan Mubarak? Bike? Mubarak. Oh, Mubarak. Mubarak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You said it good. What does it mean? Mubarak Obama. Happy Ramadan. Mm. Mubarak Obama? <laughs> I want to address one last point in this video, and it's about the H3 Snark subreddit. For more than a year now, Ethan has been talking about it and saying how toxic this place is, how they promote harassment, doxing, stalking, and why it should be banned. Because I, I believe these Snark subreddits on- I, The internet is so bad, bro. The internet is so bad. We do need to start getting doxing and stuff taken care of, and it is bad. But believe me when I say this, like, it is not just happening in a vacuum, right? Reddit should be banned. It's literally fostering the most psychopathic, it encourages harassment, doxing, stalking. It's just, it's, this is like, it's not as bad as jailbait, but it's like giving like, I have a feeling it's gonna be banned and then everyone be like, that was insane. Why the fuck was that allowed on the website for so long? These people are literally fucking, it's, it's cult behavior. I don't think they're allowed to like straight up brigade. So they're doing like a very loud dog whistle being like, hey, mm -hmm. let's put a compilation of Ethan. The snark, the whole snark phenomenon is so pathetic that Reddit yeah. allows this shit to continue because it feels like every snark subreddit leans into like straight up uh i feel like ethan would love it ethan's the kind of guy that like when we do it it's okay when they do it it's not okay and that's so human i can't even blame him that's literally so human psychopathy in terms of like the harassment and the intention of trying to ruin somebody's life and one last time let's go back to ethan's reaction of the north star radio video and how he uses his own subreddit when he faces criticism even from a way smaller creator first of all shout out to um whoever did the ops on this Lovely Callisto, Callisto. Uh, thank you. I've made an imager album of his H3 snark post in chronological order and sprinkled in a few of his cringy main subreddit posts too, along with it. So here's this fucking guy. Let's look at uh, some of his greatest hits. He's also making fan covers and asking Ethan to bring back his personal channel. And by the way, to chat and look, it's very, Hassan has said this before. Um, you know how Ethan was saying like, everyone's afraid to talk, like take down Hassan because they're afraid of the wrath. I don't know anyone who's had that story, but I know everyone who's had that story with Destiny's community, including myself. Like, one of the hesitations to tell people what he told me in private is that, like, his community is ruthless. But I also know that this is a part of being on the internet, and it will come out in the same way that everything comes out. So genuinely, it doesn't even matter, right? Like, things will come out eventually. And when there, it's the right time, maybe we'll tell some stories. But this isn't a threat. This is just the truth. Versus when Destiny burned his bridge with me, what did he say? What dirt do we have on Britney? What do we have on Britney? The same thing with the Feinstein. Fi fine, what's his name? Fien Fiends? What's that guy's name? He's like Mr. Borelli. When that thing happened, DGG went and dug up this man's history. Dug up anything on him so Destiny could use it on Twitter to yell at people. This is the kind of community it is. It's an incredibly toxic, toxic community. And if you're on the good side of it, Norman, fi Norman fin Feinstein, yeah, him. When you're on the good side of it, OK, he'll like tell the dogs to sit down. But when you're on the bad side of it, he's like, give me the dirt. What's the dirt we have on people? I Finkelstein, Finkelstein, Finkelstein. That's what it is, right? When we have these conversations, we have to be aware that it's happening to our communities. Right. And Ethan, to say this about Hassan is so ironic since I've never heard this about Hassan's community. I've only ever heard it about DGG. They're infamous for it. Infamous. Now, Ethan's community can be very spicy, but for the most part, a lot of you have even come from his community. They're okay. I've also noticed, noticed this about other communities. When I have criticism over their faves, most of them are actually pretty okay. Like they're critical, they're upset, but they do pretty okay. App and Preach's community, even Metaphysel's community is pretty harmless. Like they call me a pick me, what are you gonna do? You know, Think Before You Sleep's audience was one of the worst though. Think Before You Sleep was one of the worst, but DGG by far is the worst. It is the worst community I've ever had to deal with. They are incredibly ruthless and they do not give a fuck. And I think that's because it's a representation of their leader. I do. I think it's a representation of him and his values. When they go low, he goes lower. And that's because those are his values. And I would hate for Ethan to start hanging out in that community 
but I wouldn't be surprised. Right? Like, that's the problem. But what are you going to do? Humans are going to human. This is what it means to be on, like, the internet. That's why it's so difficult, because you have to deal with the fact that, like, okay, what's going to happen? Like, what's going to happen moving forward? There's, like, a fear element. Don't be afraid. Accept that this is life and move forward. It is what it is. Right? It is what it is. Channel. Grim is shaking Fortnite folk cover. How dare you, dude? Well, guess but for Ethan to pretend like he's being attacked in a way that smaller ch channels aren't attacked every day is bullshit. Guess what, bitch? I know who the fuck you are. And I'm gonna have a conversation about it. Let me take a look at this guy's channel. Shouting out his fans for screenshotting every comment and collecting every information on this guy and showing everything live. How is this different from what Ethan says the snark sub is doing? I mean, it might be- Okay, first of all, thank you. Your chat is one of the only chill ones. Okay, for the record, it's because I moderate it pretty heavily and my mods moderate it pretty heavily. We allow, again, disagreeing voices, but you, you can't throw around slurs. You can't do homophobia. You can't be misogynistic. And that's one of the things that like bigger communities allow is they do allow way too much misogyny, way too much racism, way too much like absolutely not. And it's hard to moderate it. It is. But my audience is small enough that it's relatively easy. Um, but Chess says, why do all these communities go as toxic as these? Are there any good ones? There are plenty of good ones, guys. They're just not run by toxic misogynists. Like there are so many good large communities. It's just it, it's dependent on the person running the community because they are a representation of like the, the majority. And I think it's just, you know, be careful dealing with these streamer guys. There's a reason why girls feel so scared to be streamers. There's a reason I'm one of the only female commentators in the space who run this particular dialogue. Right. Because it it's they come for you. Right. And they try to get under your skin, block them, move on, you know, but I look at the people running the, the, the communities. Now, I think Ethan for a long time did a really good job and actually continues to do a really good job to dispel misogyny in his community. I think we would agree. Ethan's community is not very misogynistic, right? I would say that's a reflection of him. I don't consider Ethan much of a misogynist, right? Like that's not, you know, I think he does really good at supporting Ela and her endeavors and women in general, but I would say that that's not as common among gamer boys, especially. Right. So you have, I would take that into consideration. There are lots of really good communities. It's just like, maybe not streamer gamer boy communities. I don't know. Those seem harder to find good communities in. No. It'd be even worse because of the power of a channel as big as Ethan's. Here's a post. I don't know. Was this the same, uh, investigator? By the way, I didn't even mention this guy and he's like deleting his shit. You should be scared. You fucking scumbag. Yes, he should be scared because Ethan knows by doing that, he's sending his audience to harass this guy. Yeah. Him and his crew know what their audience is capable of, even if Ethan plays dumb sometimes. Well, I hope people don't hold us to the standard of what our community does. Oh. Right. What does our community do? <laughs> They're passionate. They are passionate. I will say, again, I've, I've been on the other side of Ethan's passionate community. Like, oh, you're just using Ethan for views. You're a shitty person. Da -da 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 -da. Welcome to the internet. We're all doing a job here, but also, um, they haven't been the worst. I will say it. Like, I still don't think they're the worst. The definitely not like I'll, I'll take it. You know, the worst they call you is a cloud chaser. Like, okay. Like it's the internet, bro. But like, I don't, that's the worst versus other people, girl. <laughs> I mean, you say that, but what do they do? Isn't this back in December? Is this a Christmas stream? I remember this stream because I remember this outfit. But isn't this a Christmas stream? This was like back in December. It was like a year ago almost. <laughs> we, our community is fantastic. It's okay. all love. Yeah, no, that's true. Our Name one great. thing. They've never caused us any trouble by... Our I don't even want to go there. Well, it's tell me and I can button it. <laughs> even if they did something silly, because I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm sure it was silly and harmless. If you're <laughs> yes, thinking definitely silly and harmless. That's what I'm referring to. But it's to. not sending like fucking hate and death wishes to uh, supposed friends. Anyway. <laughs> Ethan is a snarker. In fact, he's the ultimate snarker, weaponizing his audience to send massive hate waves and his crew to find intel on his enemies by yelling at his chat when he gets any pushback, turning off comments, paying mods to heavily restrict what can be posted on his own subreddit. I mean, in some ways you want to do this to protect the safe space of your community, but when it's coming from your community, that's what's hard. And you have to decide like who's your community and who isn't. And that's hard too, because sometimes like in my community, you guys will gift memberships and those sometimes go to my haters because the haters have to subscribe to comment at me. So sometimes when you guys gift memberships, funny enough, like a hater will get it, which is kind of funny. 
And then they'll, so it's not like you have to, you have to actually learn your audience to try to say, okay, is this my audience being critical or is this haters in my audience? Cause the haters, you can't listen to the haters. You got to listen to your audience who actually sees like you in good faith and then kind of deconstruct that. That's what you have to do. Right. Uh, Luda, great question says, Brittany, what about the ETH, what Ethan's community did to Adam McIntyre? I think that's a really good example of, um, uh, of misused power in a sense. Like I think what they did to Adam was really unfair. I even think that, you know, the way they go after people to protect Ethan is by the way, unhinged. I never want my, I never like, I'm an adult. I build a very adult community. I don't, I don't want ever want. And I don't think I have a community that is ever going to be mobilized to like go after people. I mean, what a silly way to spend your time. Do not spend your breath defending me. Like, please, like I know what I'm doing. I'm going to work every day. Okay. So I think when Ethan and Hassan or Destiny or these people have their communities like go fight on their behalf, Vosh and all these people, you know, I think that's just so strange. Like what a, what a, I don't know if that's a boy thing to make it about gender. I don't, I don't know if it's a gamer thing. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's politics. Like don't do that. Okay. And that's why, um, Manifestel was so weird. I've never really had a girl community come after me before. That's not usually what happens. So when a girl community came after me, I was like, what's going on? what are you doing? Why are you pulling a boy? Like, what is this? So when we do this, we have to be very careful, like not to send our viewers to do these things because I don't want to do that. And I think I do that by making sure like I have an audience of like adults, like a lot of the people in my, my community are like really, really busy living their lives. <laughs> they can't be out here. You know what I mean? Dude, leaving hate comments on people's, on people's channels. But anyways, I don't know. It is what it is, right? So I think it's the job of the content creators to encourage their communities to be kind to one another and to make sure like you're not going into their spaces. This is a safe bubble. We don't need to take our bubble into other people's bubbles. Right. So just make sure. Hassan advocates against online harassment because he's so harassed by Destiny's community. I have heard him. I have heard him say that. But, you know, sometimes people mishear you, misunderstand you and feel a need to go and, you know, advocate for you, I suppose. Oh, Dream's community is pretty chill. They were very chill. When I covered Dream, the Dream community did come into my chat and they were pretty chill. Yeah, they were pretty chill. That's true too. They were a pretty good community. But to be fair, they're kind of um, more liberal boys, right? They were really nice when they came into my community. Yeah. All right, let's see. He's not letting any other place to have a nuanced conversation about a show or to present any criticism. He's been trying to portray the people who participate in this sub as stalker lunatics, but in reality, most of them are former big fans who are now disappointed in Ethan and were banned when they tried to express any pushback over the past year. Oh, Comrade Casey just messaged me and said, I'd appreciate not being talked about on the show. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> Talk about these nuts, <laughs> motherfucker. You just, appreciate me not talking about you? I just Suck my dick, bruh. bitch. He said, I'd appreciate not being talked about on the show. And I responded, bruh. I bet and you I would, motherfucker. <laughs> Sucks to be outed as a as a piece of shit, doesn't it? Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> How's that feel, Casey? I'm talking to you right now. Comrade Casey, we're not comrades anymore. With all that being said, I know I won't change anyone's mind with this video, but if you felt the same way I did, just know you're not alone. In the past few weeks, all the other H3 fan channels I was in contact with for years, people who were as big of fans as I was, have told me they've also unsubscribed because of Ethan's hateful actions. That's it for this video. Take care and free Palestine. Okay, let's go. That was Ethan's basement. Very interesting. And I think fair. Look, you are not obligated to continue following a content creator, me included. You should go and do what makes sense within your joy, within your values, within your belief systems. You have the right to enjoy a stream in which you don't always have to feel sick to your stomach at what your content creator is saying. If the content creator you're watching is making you feel sick to your stomach, you are allowed to leave. You do not have to be a diehard fan. You do not have to ruin your morning you know, by listening to these people. I know it feels kind of sad, like bittersweet, like, man, this used to be my routine. It's okay to change up your routine. Okay, you're allowed to change up your routine. I think Ethan is making a huge mistake, but I think he, Ethan has to make this mistake with the information he has available to him. And this is what it is. So I think Hassan tried many times to meet Ethan where he was, and Ethan did not accept that handout, that olive branch, that that attempt but i also know it's very difficult look you only have so many spoons in a day okay you only have so many spoons as a content creator to reach out to other people and look friendships on youtube are very shallow until they get much deeper i mean i have had friendships with youtubers for so many years and then one day they just ghost and never talk again and it's just what happens right because 
YouTubers at the end of the day, they're not meeting your families. They're not interacting with your loved ones. Like they're not coming to your house for Sunday brunch. And if they are, then those relationships probably mean more. But look at David Dobrik's group. Look at all the big YouTuber groups. Look at James Charles. Look at all these people that pretended to be close friends in order to get your views and your money to for you to live parasocially through their friendships only to find out it was all for views, right? And I don't blame them. They're running businesses. Remember that. YouTubers are not just like, regular old people. We're running businesses. Speaking of which, we have 14 out of 15 super chats. We have 35 minutes to reach it if you want me to extend stream today. If not, no problemo. We'll watch the videos I had planned and call it a day. If you'd like me to extend stream and watch a video of your choosing based off a poll, we have to get more super chats in because I am, say it with me, running a business. I am not your friend. I'm running a business. YouTubers are not your friends. We're running businesses. We are paying tax. We are paying tax. Okay, so these content creators, even Ethan and, and Hassan, they're running a business. Okay, remember how Ethan called Philip DeFranco and feels like, oh, we've never talked on the phone before. They've known each other for like eight years. You've never talked on the phone before. That's what I'm saying. They're not friends. You know what I mean? Like they're barely friends. They're like friendly at most. And by the way, I think it would be beautiful, beautiful if we could have a a way of doing things on YouTube in which we were simply friendly. But given the political climate, it's kind of insane because there's now an obligation to say like, hey, your friend says this, your friend believes this, your friend does this. It's very, it's very hard to navigate these social spaces, right? Thank you. 